We've got 30 more seconds for uh, everybody, and then we will get going on lesson 39. Um, <laughs> all right let's go uh leah welcome to class we're going to start out by reviewing some homework problems uh so hopefully you will enjoy and we're going to start off let's see i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen See who's on tap. Oh, nice. Sai has a good one. All right. So here's a classic mixture problem eventually. Is the internet slower here than it is at the moment? Yeah. Can you, can you swallow a little bit? I sure can. All righty. Like up a little bit? Oh, yeah, sorry. That's very not at all. <laughs> okay, so essentially we have these two bottles of, of juice that are being mixed together. So we have a 48 ounce bottle um, that's 100% juice and a 32 ounce bottle that's 40 percent juice so and it's it's asking what the combination of actual juice would be um like what percentage that would actually be if you mix them together so i know that um actual juice over total amount is going to be our like is going to be our answer so i wanted to find out how much juice was in the 40 uh, 48 ounce bottle that was pretty easy it's 100 percent juice so that was 48 ounces of juice and then for the 32 ounce bottle, I just multiplied 32 by 0.4 and I got 12.8. Um, so 12.8 plus um, 48 ounces is 60.8. So I put 60.8 over 80 and I got 70, um, 76%. Questions for Sai? Again, right? I think, you know, the keys. These are you needed to think really carefully, read carefully, right? But you knew that one bottle was 100%. So how much juice is that? Well, the whole thing's going to be juice. If it was only 40%, then 40% of that is going to be juice. So you just kind of figure out the total amount of juice and divide by how much stuff you've got, and you should be good. That was obviously a nice warm up for number 445, which I will share with you right now. Yes, Tristan. Uh, I'm viable, yes. <laughs> right, right, right. Probably not the smartest thing to do because there's a good chance that the answer. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so I've got it on this. Can you see it on the screen now? No, but. Oh, 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 sorry. You put 444 on. Yeah. Oh, but it was already. Sorry. So yeah. no, so nobody has so 440. Somebody, somebody highlighted it, and I put my name on it, but I couldn't get the so Gotcha. Nice. Okay. I, sorry. I just gotcha. I mean, now I understand. understand. Sorry. Yeah, because they're on decimal. Beautiful. So wait, look, I, I want to come back to 445. That might be a nice one. Maybe we'll spend a little more time in groups right before the quiz working on that one. Um, because I want you to think about that a little more. Right, like guess and check could be a method. There's definitely a better method, especially because right, that you might have gotten it by guessing checking if it was a nice number, right? But the, the number could be like, I'm gonna add 42.69 ounces, which you will never get right. So, so, so let's go and look at that one again in a second. But for now, let's, what do we have next? Uh, Ruth, 447. 
Oh, and a nice little review of our absolute value stuff. Just, yeah, so I will mute myself. Okay. So for 447, it tells you that the points negative six and four, two and four, and one and two are on the graph um, of y equals a absolute value x minus h plus k. And because um and because it says that um the points are part of one absolute value graph, you know that those aren't the vertexes of different of vertices of different ones, which took me a <laughs> took me a moment to realize. So um, you're gonna start by plotting the points on a, on a graph. And um, you're gonna have a rough idea of where the lines are gonna be because you know it's absolute value. And the two things we know about absolute value are that both um, lines um, are going to intersect at a point to meet a vertice, a vertex, and that both lines have the same slope. So because you can plot a line or the two lines which are, um, uh, B and C, you will be able to find the slope for that because slope is rise over run. So that's two over one. So the slope is two. So you just continue plotting the lines down until you reach a point where you think it's good. And then you can apply that slope to A and just keep going down until you meet a point. I got negative two and negative four. Um, and from here, you can fill in the expression y equals the absolute value of x minus h plus k, because we know a is going to be the value of the slope. So that is 2. And then h is where, where on the x axis the vertices, the vertex will be. Sorry. So that's going to be um, 2. And then we know that k is going to be where on the y axis it is. So that's uh, minus 4. But one thing you need to be careful about is that um, when you look at the like the, um, the expression without the numbers in it, it says x minus, uh, x minus h, but because it's um, a negative number, because it's uh, minus two, um, subtracting a negative number is the same as adding. So you're just gonna do x plus two and then minus four because it's negative four. Any questions? Questions for Ruth? Really nice explanation. Everybody, you can do one of those on their own now and see if you heard Ruth. Right. Labor day. Uh, I think a couple of things. So, so if one thing that I noticed, one thing some of you were doing yesterday. He's like, oh yeah, I got three points. Hot dog, I'm just, you know, I'll just connect these guys and I'm good to go. Why is that not gonna work for this? Yeah, they're different slope, right? The absolute value has to have the same slope on both sides. So that, that's, that's no good. Um, so there's a, right, there's a number of ways that you can think about doing this. I mean, one could just be connect two of the points. And I could connect these. But then I know it's got to go through this point, but I don't know where down here that's going to intersect. Right? Could you come up with the equation of the line that's going to go through this point if you know the equation of this line? Tell me how, Finn. You got an idea? Because they have the same slope. All, almost. So it's, it's, it's they have the same slope. It's flipped. Exactly, but it's flipped, right? Like one will be positive three, the other will be negative three, right? You know that's got to be the case. So once you find the, so yes, let's say the slope for this one is three. Do you know the slope that goes to this point? Yeah, it's got to be negative three. Do you know this point? Yeah, you're given the point. So if you have the point and the slope, can you find an equation for this line? Totally. And you can find the equation for that line, and you've got the equation for this line. Can you find out where they intersect? Of course you can, right? That's why I like this problem. Like, 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 I, like I think I like, like I think Ruth just kind of really carefully drafted it out, right? And she could see like, oh, this is going to be where the vertex is. And then she could nicely prove that they were, you know, one's a positive slope, one's a negative slope. Again, kind of like Tristan's question earlier, it's possible this vertex is at 1.97. At which point you'd be like, ugh. But you can totally, right? You can totally come up with the equations. 
and use our great new skill of solving that system of equations to find this point. Then you know the vertex. Remember, if you know the vertex and the slope, this is easy, right? Because remember, where does this guy come from? Remember, this says take the absolute value of x, move it by h to the right, move it k up, and the slope is going to be a. Right, so you can put all those pieces together. So I really like these kind of props because there's a lot involved there. Um, the, uh, I was talking to somebody, I think a year, two years ago, who had a totally different method for solving this one. I think they were like in seventh grade at the time. And, uh, and they said, well, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go through all that. This, this is why I love like not telling you how to do things. Right? Cause when I tell you how to do something, I'm telling you one way to do it. You may well know a better way to do it. And honestly, this way I think is better than what I just described to you. And I never thought about it until some seventh grader told me about it. They said, whoops. Uh, so Leah, that's a no-no. Make sure you don't bring your cell phone to class next year. Okay. This problem happened to work out that these points were on the same Y value. So if that is true, why is this kind of handy? Yeah, can you figure out the X coordinate of the vertex? It's gotta be halfway between these. So he was just like, oh, I'm just gonna find halfway between these. I know that's the X coordinate. And then you had the equation for this line. So he just plugged that in and found the Y coordinate of the vertex. How cool is that? Lucy. Could you use like a midpoint formula? Exactly, yeah, if these were on the same spot, that's exactly what you could do, right? When you find the midpoint of these guys, and then you know whatever that X coordinate is, also has to be the X coordinate of the vertex. So cool, right? And again, much, right? Just a much more thoughtful, interesting, like now, my way will work for any point. So that's good to know as well, but if the problem's set up like this and it's really easy, don't do it the long way, right? Again, your life is hopefully about efficiency, right? Doing things well and quickly and yeah. So if you can see a better way to do it, yeah, do that. Again, like that, that's why you're here at St. Andrews, right? You are not here at St. Andrews for me to teach you how to do stuff. God, that, like, no, I'll tell you right now, no, that is not, maybe you think you are here for that. Maybe you think you're here for me to tell you how to do stuff. No. Again, if that's why you're here, you should stay at home, watch Khan Academy and save your parents 60 grand, right? Like, yeah, don't, don't, no, no. You're here to change how you think, right? You're here to spot things like this so that you can do things better than I can. You understand what I'm saying, right? Like this is, you're, you're pretty fortunate to be here, but you need to make the most of it. And if you're just here to learn stuff, God, don't, stop wasting your time. Stop wasting my time, right? Think for yourself, come up with new ways to solve problems. We don't have the cure for the cancer. That's gonna be your job, right? I don't know the cure for cancer. I can't tell you how to do that. But in the same way, what we're doing now is practice for that in the future. That's why I try not to tell you how to do things. I let you figure it out yourself. Because there are problems that I don't know the answer to. There are problems that nobody knows the answer to, but we need to figure out the answer. And if you just do what I can do, ugh, why you waste. Um, sorry, it's a nice speech for the day. Uh, excellent, Ruth. Thank you. Uh, what do we have next? Four fell oh, good. Yes, yeah, so Cyrus. Yeah, why don't you just kind of come up and put this one on the board for us? Uh, oh, oh, do we already have name there? Uh, 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 go, 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 yeah, yes, you're in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah just do it for now, Cyrus. Okay, so 450. Oh, classic percentage problem. All right, so the problem was, um, Randy has uh, 20 25% more money than Sandy, and Randy has 20% more money than Mandy with uh, $1,800, how much does Sandy have? So if he has, what is that, 
20% more than what, 1800. And that is 20% of 1800 is $360. And you add that back on to the 1800 to find out how much Randy has. So R equals $2,160. So that's how much Randy has. And then if you're trying to find out how much uh, what Sandy has, so that would be 20% of this. So 20% uh, of which is uh, five forty. Yeah, yep. There we go. And then you add that, or you subtract that from this. And then you, so Sandy has sixteen one thousand six hundred. I might have messed up the uh, percentages somewhere, but. Did we do that? Mm -hmm. So do you got mm -hmm. I'm sorry? I got something else. Oh, oh, I love it when we have disagreements. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. I think I messed up the uh, percentages though. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. For, oh, for Sandy. But that is what you got? For Sandy? Sandy. Oh, there's just, oh, I love it. Oh, good. Yeah, I, think, yeah, I, I think I switched the percentages on accident. So one proposal is Sandy has 1620. And what's the other one? 1728. Oh, 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 we, oh, we got to find out. I think I accidentally switched the percentages, though. So tell me what you mean by switch the percentage. Like uh, when I was reading through it, I might accidentally, my brain said, uh, what, 25 here? What, yeah. Maybe, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I liked your. Uh, I did some of the percentages. That was weird. All right, let's find out. Yeah, let, let, let's crank it up. Oh, but did you use a different method? Yeah. Tell us about your method. Um, so I got, I didn't use it, so I got um, uh, two uh, percent of the Yeah. Um, and then I got two thousand. Oh, so, so you you agree with this part? Yeah, I agree with that. Part. Okay. And I established that um two thousand one hundred fifty is one hundred twenty five percent of what. Andy has. So, uh, which is also equal to five and more. So I just multiply the uh, two thousand and fifty-five four by five. Uh, so you're saying you did something like? Yeah. Is it Mandy or Sandy? Yeah. 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 How do we feel about that? Yeah. I, I think you, you multiply this guy by point two, right? So, so I think you, I think you, you just me messed up the order a little bit. No, I multiplied it before. I'm double checking my work. Yeah, because Randy has 25% more than Sandy. Yeah, and we're looking yeah. for Sandy, but Sandy's Randy has um, 2,150, so it's 25%, not 20. Yeah, but I put 25%. I just double checked. I actually wrote 20, but I, I got a 25%. And I uh, subtracted it and subtracted it. Um, yes. In the first part of the problem, they're saying 25% more money than Sandy. Are they talking about like 25% um, of like Randy's money or Sandy? Great question. Right? Like that, 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 that's kind of the key that you want to make sure you figure out. Yeah, so let, let's spell that out really carefully. So when they say uh, Randy has 25% more than Sandy, does everybody agree that this is kind of an algebraic way of writing that? Yeah. That whatever Randy has, it's 25% more than Sandy. Which because I multiply, right? This one kind of keeps how much money Sandy has. And we're tacking on 25% of whatever Sandy has. Does that help with that piece? But now we've also got right now, you know what? Honestly, I don't care about how much Mandy has right now. Because I know that Randy has 20% more than Mandy. Can I rate that as an equation? Randy has 1.2. Everybody agree? Yeah. So 1.2 times Mandy. Everybody good so far? This literally says Randy has 20% more than Mandy. Both of those things are true. And what I want to find out is I want to find out how much money Sandy has. Well, 
notice what I've got here is a system of equations. Can I figure out how much Sandy has, as we say in math, as a function of what Mandy has? I think so. Because those both equal R, so they equal each other, right? So 1.25 times Sandy equals 1.2 times times Mandy. So how can I figure out the S? I'll divide both sides by 1.25. So the amount that Sandy has is going to be 1.2 divided by 1.25 times Mandy. And whatever Mandy has, I can plug that in and I can figure it out. Yeah, like, like in our case, if you plug in the 1800. Let's see, what, can we simplify this a little bit? Like maybe you like to simplify things. 1.2, how can I rate that as a fraction? Um, oh, uh, 12 over... 12.5. Yeah, uh, or 12 over 10, or 6 over 5. Oh, yeah. Right, so I could rate that as 6 over 5. And how about the 1.25? I think Elizabeth gave that to us a second ago. That's 5 over 4. Mm -hmm. I could multiply by the reciprocal, which would be four over five, which are going to be 24 over 25. So Sandy is going to have 24 over 25 times Mandy. What's 24 over 25 in a percentage? Close, 96%. We've also found that Sandy is going to have 96% of whatever Mandy has. So if you multiply that 1800 by 0.96, I think you do get 1728. Does that make sense? But again, right, but the big thing, right? Like, like you can, right? Like, like you, you, you want to get beyond, and again, like we're not quite there. That's why they gave you the number to kind of play around with this problem. It's kind of the first time we've done it, right? But this is the goal, right? The goal is to recognize this system of equations and be able to carefully say like, oh, I know what S is as a function of M. Just by really carefully, right? Translating the English, into the algebra, and then that makes your life pretty easy, right? This is a pretty darn simple system of equations to solve. But it's really hard if you just do it in your head, right? If you're like, oh yeah, I think that's gonna be, is that 25% of Mandy? Is it 20? Do I add it? Do I subtract it? Right? Like you can get really confused, but if you carefully write it down in algebraic symbols, your life gets better. You're pretty good on that one? That's a nice, that's, that's a nice, another nice meaty problem. Uh, well, I love it. So Finn, we've got 451 and Finn's work should be here in just a second. Oh yes, a nice little three-dimensional shape. Tons of right angles. Oh, look at that. Tell us about this one, Finn. I'm going to mute myself if you can unmute yourself. Um, so for 451A, it just asks you to find the volume. And for that, I sort of split it into two shapes. I, I had the bottom shape, which was just 3x times 3x times x. And then I had this sort of other shape on top of it, which was 2x times 3x times x. Uh, and when I multiplied that all out, I got 9x uh, cubed for the bottom shape and 6x cubed for the top shape, which added up to 15x cubed for the total volume. Everybody see, see where Finn's getting at? Uh, it's a really nice figure. He's, he's kind of talking, he looks at that bottom layer and he just found the three-dimensional volume in the bottom layer and that kind of thing that's sitting on top. I know it's great. Beautiful. Uh, then for B, for the surface area, I... I have 3x times x. Uh, oh, I, I have 4 of 3x times x for the four sides of the bottom shape. Yeah, we see that. Like, you look at the bottom shape, like those four sides, I think they're all going to be 3x times x. Uh, then 3x times 3x is the shape of like the bottom face oh, yeah, the that we're not range. seeing. That bottom counts too, right? Uh, then 
you have two faces that are three X times X. Oh, those, those guys that are kind of on top and bottom thing? Yeah. I like it, I like it. Uh, then you have, uh, oh, you have another three X times X that's like the topmost. Oh, face. I, I like it. Yeah, the, the very top thing. That's another. Because, like, if, if you look at it from the top, it's just going to be. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's, 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 like, if, you, if you look at this kind of thing with the top, what's it going to look like? Yeah, it's just, it's just a square. That's all it's going to look like at the top. That's really cool. And then you have two faces that are 2x times x, and two faces that are uh, 2x by 3x. Totally agree. <laughs> and then all that stuff up and what you get, you get something 105x squared. Yep. I think that's pretty solid. Question, Ruth? <laughs> um, uh, oh, oh. Wait, okay. I also have a question. Then I'm thinking how you're doing like this. Three. I'm going to just three and then the eight, nine, twelve, twenty-four, thirty-eight. Because I was, I was just adding all the x squares together in a way that was less complicated. I just, I, I added them back in later. My answer is 105x squared. Yeah, and again, well, like I'm not, I mean, yeah, so we, yeah, we need to be careful, for it. There's a good chance we got like 12 different answers. Yeah, Finn's method, beautiful. Um, yeah, well, like maybe somewhere, I think about it, in, in, in the like, Lord knows, 50 different mental calculations. Yeah, there's a good chance all of us might have made a little mistake somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but, but Finn's process is beautiful. Although he gave me an idea, though, actually. I think. I think that the big takeaway here is Finn's point about like what happens if you look at it from the top. I you need to make your life a lot easier. I had an idea. Yeah, I had an yeah. idea just now. Tell me more. Tell me more. That is that you can look at the you can look at it from three different sides. Look at all the shapes on three sides, and then just double all of those. So like oh look gosh. looking at it from the top, you would have three shapes that are just three x times x. Looking yeah, at it from the side. Or you could even, yeah, here, oh yeah, oh yeah, let's talk about this. If you look at that from the top, what are you gonna see? It's square. You're just gonna see a square, right? I agree, there's gonna be three cool things. But literally, you're just gonna see a square with dimensions 3x by 3x. Do you understand where things are, right? And that takes care of like that, that whole top section. What happens if you look at it from the side? What are you going to see? Depends on the side, but it depends on the side. So let, but let's say if I'm looking from this side, like right here, I'm looking at that. What am I gonna see? I'm gonna see another square. I'm gonna see another 3x by 3x square. And there will also be the one on the other side, too. So that actually means now I just have three of these things. But, things, but, but, I've, but I've taken care of lots of those little things that Finn was adding up. And again, if I look at it from the bottom, what do I see? 3x. Yeah, I told us. That's another one of these squares. So really, we just have four of those. Are we missing anything now? The, the two other sides that are like T-shaped. Yeah, I think, that, yeah, we've covered everything. Right? We've covered the left, right, top, and bottom. We're missing the T-shaped things. Which are 3x. Yeah, those are going to have to change a little bit. But that's just going to be right, 3x times x. And the other one is 2x times x. Is that right? Yeah. So I've got a 3x times x. And I've got a 2x times x. But I have two of them, right? So I've got those two different sides. I, I just had another idea. Oh, tell me. And that is that you could just take, you could just say that the whole thing is 3x cubed and then subtract the two. Like pieces oh, from either side. Shut up. Each of those pieces would just be x times two x times three x, and then you'd have the volume. Say it again really slowly for everybody. So if the base, the height, and the width are all three x, 
then the whole thing would just be 3x cubed. And then those missing spaces that make it shaped sort of like a T, you can just find what those are and subtract that from the total volume. All right, so let me make sure everybody's on board with this, right? You can kind of just pretend that it's a cube, right? You can pretend it's a cube with that given surface area. And remember, that basically means, I, mean, I, think, I think Finn said it would be cubed. We don't want to find the volume, we still want to find the surface area. So we still want to take this and we need six of these guys. This would be the surface area of the cube is three by three. This is nine X squared. So six times nine X squared is kind of our beginning point. If it was a cube, but we're taking some stuff away. We're only taking away those two things kind of on the side. And they measure again 2x times x, and there's two of them. The 2x times x is 2x squared, and the two is 4x squared. So you're going to take away that from both sides, which would be 8x squared. So I think that's also going to be our answer. All these ways work, right? You can count up every single one. Really careful, but I guess that's what we kind of got in trouble. Right? If you did that, you're like, oh my god, forget that one, did I do that one? Did I? You can think about it just by looking at the big size, that makes your life a little easier. Or, like Finn said, then it's really just a cube, so you really just find the surface area of that cube is subtract out the couple of things that you're missing again, right? That, that's that is that's thinking, that's efficient thinking. That's why it's like I'm always amazed. Again, like the, the people who wrote these problems are really, really good. Right, you can look at this problem and you can be like, oh yeah, duh, that's an easy one. I know the surface of a rectangle. But that is not what this problem is about. This one is why, like, like, I'll tell you, one of my biggest pet peeves is kids coming all the time, and like, they look at this book, like, oh, you're like, oh, I've done all of this, I know how to do all of this. Right? And in their head, they look, at, they look at this problem and they're like, oh, I know that the area of a rectangle is length times width, so I'm finished, and this is an easy problem. Right? They don't get it. They don't, right? They don't understand at all what this problem is about. This problem is about seeing things from three different perspectives and how you can make your life easier and more efficient and better. But obviously, I tried to explain this to them. They're just like, but I can get the answer. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> That's not the point. Um, really good problem thing. Really good, like, thinking your way through that process. Um, and again, right, it goes back to everything. Really That's what we're here for. We're here to think better. And that's why I don't, I don't care if it's 47 or 105 or 20. I don't care. I don't care what the answer is. Like that, that's silly, right? I want to be able to see what's happening and make those advances in the thinking. Good, sir. I love it. Thank you, Finn. Oh, I, I get something about 454. Oh, good work problem. Let's give Elizabeth a chance on 455 and then we'll come back. Um, yeah, oh yeah, you don't, you don't, did you do it in your homework? Did your homework submitted? Maybe I can just uh, well, I didn't have to do it, but I have it You want to, can you just talk, talk us through it real quick? Yeah, sure. No, I, just, I don't know why I would have been so good, Well, that's a good question. Yeah, does anybody have a, like a specific question on, on this one? No. <laughs> Sorry about that, Lee. I was muted, wasn't I? Trust me, what I said was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe so. But hopefully you heard me a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to mute again so that Elspeth can unmute. Okay, um, so for A, um, the problem was 3R three, uh, three plus 5S equals 6, and then 9R equals 13S plus 4. So I started by putting the, uh, the R's on both sides. So I just subtracted 5S from the first one. Um, from both sides of the equation, so you get 3R equals uh, 6 minus 5S. Um, and then I multiplied everything. I multiplied the first equation by three. So you get nine R equals um, 18 minus 15 S. Um, and so then 
you can set those two equations equal to each other so that you get um, uh, 18 minus 15s equals 13s plus 4. And then solve that so you get 28s and 14. So s is equal to 1 half. And then you plug that back into either of the equations. So I did 3r plus 5 times 1 half equals 6. So then you get 3r plus 2.5 equals 6. 3r equals 3.5. And then finally, r equals 7 over 6. So. I like the method, right? I think, where I think we all we all get the big idea, right? I think elimination, just kind of right, that's what Elizabeth did there is a nice idea. If you multiply that top one by three or negative three, you'll get the same coefficient on the R. And then just write, just carefully do your addition and subtraction. That's cool. Okay. Uh, um, Elizabeth, did you do B by the elimination method as well? Uh, no. I don't oh, tell us, wait, tell us what you I, did. Wait, I'm trying to see. Wait, I might have. Um, sorry. Uh, so 3a equals 1 plus 1 third b and then 5a plus b equals 11. So I multiplied both equate or not both equations, just the first equation by 3 over 1, which is the reciprocal of 1 over 3. So instead of dividing it, so I got 3a or not 3a, uh, 9a equals 3 plus b. And then I added both equations together. So you get 14a equals 14. Um, and that just gives you um, a uh, one for a and then plugs that back into the second equation to get uh five plus b equals 11 um b equals six i think it's nice there we good right so so sounds like oh, the elimination by multiplying the top by three so the b coefficient had the same one you might argue you could argue this is a good substitution problem why might you think this is a good substitution problem <laughs> I was just going to say because B is alone, so you just leave the 5A. Yeah. And then taking the rest of the equation. Right. Again, since the B is just, there's no coefficient, right? Since the B is just by itself, that might be a pretty easy one to do by substitution. But again, elimination works great. Again, good to be comfortable with both. I used an example in my calculus class a second ago. Like, I, I, I don't, right? It's not wise just to be like, I'm a substitution master. Like I can do everything by substitution. That's great and all, but again, depending on the problem, it might be much easier to do by elimination. And I like to use the analogy, right? Like your, your football team might have the greatest quarterback in the world, but if they have no running game at all, you're going to lose constantly because the defense will just cover the pass all day long and you won't go anywhere, right? You can't just be one dimensional. Much better to have a good running game and a good quarterback than the best quarterback who ever lived and no running game at all. You'll lose every, you, you've got to be adaptable in the same way. If all you can do is substitution method, there will be problems that are going to take you 20 minutes. Whereas if you also know the elimination, you're done in 30 seconds and you can move on. All right, so, so make sure you don't, again, don't just get stuck in the, I know how to find the answer. No, who cares? Like that's not, we, we've talked about photo math before, haven't we? Like I always need to, Right, holy, right, right. It's an app that you can take a picture of any of. Well, thankfully, not any of these problems. Right, that's the reason we do these problems. You can't use photo math to take a picture of Finn's problem. It will, it'll, it will be like, what are you talking about, crazy person? Right, but like a system of equations, you know, you know no thing. Like the one that Elvis did just did, she did really well. But if all you wanted was the answer, I would tell you to get the free app on your phone, take a picture, and it'll tell you the answer. Don't. That's not the point. Gosh, no. Sorry. Uh, what do we have left? 450. Let's look at 456. Oh, oh. I do not want to deprive you of your opportunity to demonstrate your learning. Um, so I, I, am, I am a sweetheart that way. So I am going, and, and we have already covered the problem that the quiz is based on. Uh, and you don't need you don't, you don't need Desmos or a calculator or anything. Uh, and Leah, I'm going to share this little quiz with you on the chat so that you can play around with it as well. Give me one second for that. You are very well. Again, do not look at the back. The answer is on the back. If you look on the back, I will gladly send you to the honor code. And don't do that. When you are finished, put your pencil down. Do not pick it up again. And look at the answer that is on the back. 
And Leah, give me one second. I'm going to share this with you. Oh, oh yes, and Satchel. Sorry, Satchel, I'm coming. Actually, I'm just going to share my screen with you, Satchel and Leah, so you should be able to see it in just a second. There you go, Leah and Satchel. So you got those three points. I want to see if you can come up with an equation in the form A times the absolute value of X minus H plus K. Why is it stopped? Uh, you put your pencil down and you read my solution. Thirty first. All right, do it as soon as possible. Satchel, you can just email me your solution. It would be great.
30 more seconds. Just enough time to talk about these two remaining problems from last night's homework. All right, you've got a solution. So again, if you have the right answer, I will take your paper. If you don't, hang on to that to uh, review later and make sure you know how to do it in the future. That is, a, that is the primary point. Oh, no. Yeah, I only want it if it's perfect. If it's perfect, I'll take it. If not, it is yours to it is yours to learn from. That is the reason we are here. Uh, so real quick, let's talk about these last couple that you struggled with a little bit. We got just two minutes of plenty. So 445 or whatever it was. Remember, this is the idea. The question is: I want to how much of the 30 of the 40% solution should I add to get to 80%? And again, right? Like you, you, you could, you could like just add one, add two, add three, right? Like spend all day figuring that out. But again, it might be some kind of fraction. But think about what I've got here. Forty-eight is what I originally had, right? I had forty-eight ounces of juice and forty-eight ounces total of stuff. I'm going to add the other juice. When I add the other juice, the whole piece that I add x, right? So x is clearly how much of the other juice I am adding. But remember, when I add that stuff. If I add X ounces of juice of mixture, am I adding X ounces of juice? I'm not. I'm only adding 40%, right? 40% of X is how much is juice. So this is going to show the amount of juice divided by the amount total, Jesse. And I want that to be 80%. Can we all solve this for X? I think so. And then you'll figure out what X is. Even if the answer turns out to be 49.2765, you'll be good. It's been a while, but we love our work problems. Remember, my hint on this guy is since Taylor can cut the grass in three hours, that means he does a third per hour. The other guy does it in two hours. He can cut half of a lawn per hour. We're told that Taylor works double the time that James does, or whatever the names are. So let's say J is the number of hours that he works. So how many lawns does he cut? Well, he's going to cut J times a half, right? J is the number of his hours. Well, how many hours does Taylor works? He works twice as much. So he works double J. But what's his rate? It's a third per hour. I'll add those together. How many lawns do they cut? They cut four lawns. And again, we maybe a common denominator here. Or actually, I'm going to multiply everything by six. If I multiply this whole thing by six, Six divided by three is two. So this will become four J. Six divided by two is three. So that's a three J and six times four is 24. Add those to get seven. So J is 24 over seven. And obviously Taylor would be double that, 48 over seven. All right, but same idea. The key is you just got to figure out he cuts a third per hour, he cuts a half per hour, and then just read the question really carefully. To prepare for Friday's assessment, go over the problems that we've done, right? Like, I, I, there's almost, you know, like, that's kind of the beauty of this class, I think, is you shouldn't have to cram for any kind of test. If you've been doing the homework and being careful all along, you're ready. You're ready to take it right now, right? If you've done your job up until now, you are ready to go. If you've been blowing it off, you're not ready to go. Time to pay the piper, but uh, have a great couple of days. I will see you on Friday. Leah, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your classes. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Finn. Sorry, what's your, you mean like the absolute value yeah. ones? I mean, yeah, because the slopes are negative three for those. For the, for the left yeah. hand yeah. side. So you're, Correct. You're Right, because because if you make that negative, it's gonna flip it across uh, the x-axis. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great question. Yes, I. Um, is the assessment oh, but don't be late anymore. Okay, I'm gonna start giving you. Uh, uh, is the assessment going to be on the third quarter? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, like, is it gonna be? Yes. Yeah. Third quarter ends Friday. Yep. Thank you. You are welcome.